Okay, so if uh, you're watching this, that means you probably already know why we're doing this, but uh, just for the sake of beating the horse to death that's already dead, uh, we're going to talk about real quick why anyone would do a clock mod to a Super Game Boy. Uh, the short version of the story is that uh, evidently Nintendo wanted to save money when they were building this, so they left out the um, uh, crystal clock that sets the internal CPU to the same speed as the actual Game Boy, and instead it uses the internal clock of the Super NES. The problem with that is that the games run at the wrong speed, so music is just slightly higher pitched, and the the game just, it, I think it's something like 3% faster. So uh, there are plenty of videos online if you actually want to see that, but uh, we're going to be doing a modification where I'm going to be adding a crystal clock here that I got from uh, Thursday Customs. And uh, first step is going to be to... Well, actually, the first step I uh, didn't show on camera here. The first step is to make sure that your Super Game Boy is actually operational before you start. Uh, when I got this, it was uh, it was pretty gnarly, it needed to be cleaned up. So I've already had it apart and cleaned everything out, uh, made sure all the connectors were nice and clean, and uh, validated that it works. So the first step here is going to be taking this thing apart. Um, this is the standard game bit driver for Super NES, and this is kind of uh, boring stuff, so we'll stop the video here and uh, I'll start it up again once I've got it taken apart. Okay, so we've got the, the unit apart here, and uh, this is the, the front. And I'll take this guy over here, and this is what we're going to be working on. So I'm going to set these, these bits aside and uh, focus on the main board here. The uh, the first thing I want to do here is to figure out where I'm going to mount this little gem. Now, I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but this guy is, is super handy the way that he's labeled. Uh, 73 and 74, or 74 and 73 actually refer to the pins on the CPU down here that we're going to be, we're going to have to actually lift these pins and wire the CPU directly to this clock and the ground is so that the clock actually has some power to it. So we're going to figure out where I'm going to mount this, and uh, I'll bring it back on. Okay, so I've decided that this is probably a good place to mount it. Everybody kind of mounts it there uh, from the pictures that I've seen. Uh, there's probably not much chance of contact between there. We've got this nice uh, mask here, but I'm going to put a piece of uh, double-sided tape on the back of it to hold it in place right about there. I did consider briefly putting it uh, putting it over here on the cartridge slot, but uh, it just it seems unnecessary. We can just put it in here. The, the important thing is that I didn't want to leave it kind of hanging in the case or to tape it to the case because I want to be able to take this back out of here at some point. Uh, the Next thing that we need to do is uh, probably the trickiest part about this. If something's going to go wrong, it's probably going to go wrong here, is I need to lift pins 73 and 74 on this, the, uh, the SGB CPU 01. And pins 73 and 74 are, I'm going to mark these guys with uh, my super fine point Sharpie. There are these two guys here. The easiest way that I had to remember where exactly these guys are is that this hole right here, it's the it's the two that to the left that connect to it. So we're gonna make a mark right here. Mark this one. And then this guy right here. This is the two that we're going to be working with. That didn't work out as well as I thought it would. But uh, essentially what I've got to do is I've got to lift those two pins off of this without uh, breaking them off of the, the CPU here. And those two pins are actually going to get wired in respectively to their two slots here. So uh, when I'm set up and ready to do that, I'm going to be using the, uh, the sewing needle technique where basically we're going to be uh, heating up a soldering iron and taking the sewing needle down here and trying to get it in between the the leg 
and the, the trace there and see if we can't just gently lift that up when we've got some heat applied to it. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll pause the video here and when we're ready to get started with that, we'll start it up again. So I knew that uh, I was going to want to have this held still and I've got to manipulate uh, a soldering iron and a, uh, a sewing needle at the same time. And I don't want this to move while I do it, and I don't want to put like alligator clamps on it because I don't want to scuff the board here. So what I did is I found this. This is um, this is just a piece of cardboard. It's the uh, record flat thing, and uh, I just cut a hole out of it. This is the size of this this uh, extrusion from the cartridge connector, and uh, this electrical tape here is just because I don't want bits of uh, uh, cardboard getting into the pin connectors. So I'm going to just set this down here, cut it to the size of that, that hole there, and that way this is just going to hold still for me while I, while I work with it. So we'll be getting started in just a minute. All right, so here we go. This is, uh, this is my first attempt here. I don't usually do tutorial videos because I'm always afraid something's going to fail catastrophically. So uh, you might get to watch catastrophic failure here or great success. I'll apply a little bit of heat to that pen. We got the adjacent pen heated up just fine. He's all excited. Yep. Okay, I think my Pen lifting technique had a little bit to be desired, but uh, it seems to be coming along. I think we had some false starts and I went back to YouTube to see if I was doing this wrong. I haven't uh, tried to lift a pen since I did a Super NES um, 60 hertz mod. Seems like forever ago. Alright, maybe I did that in the wrong freaking order. So now I need to get in between these two pins here. This is going to be super tricky not to in that poor capacitor. Okay, so the pins have been lifted. I need to maybe straighten them out a little bit, but we've got the two pins up that we need. I don't know if you can see that from the video, but uh, these are the hard part is uh, ostensibly over. So I'm going to try not to make these little guys too angry. And I'll show another video in a minute. Or actually, we'll actually start the next segment in a second. Okay, so uh, we've got the pins lifted. And let me see if I can get more light on it so it's a little bit more obvious what's going on there. But as you can see down here, after lifting the pins, just to make sure these guys behave themselves, I slipped a, a little sliver of electrical tape down there and kind of pushed it down in. That's just to make sure that we don't accidentally create a solder bridge or something stupid like that. And uh, upon con further consideration, I've decided not to put uh, the, not to mount it right here, the, the chip. Reason being that the, uh, the solder pads stick up on the back here, and let's see if I can just kind of pull this off here. I don't want to do this too many times, but basically these guys right here are going to keep it from sitting flush on the board, so when you put it there, it kind of rocks back and forth, and that's no good. I don't want that, so uh, I just need to be very careful about, you know, which pin is which, 7374 ground, so from the left, 7374 ground. I'm going to put, uh, I'm using this uh, this scotch mounting tape here it's uh, it's pretty thick it's thicker than I would strictly have liked but uh, 
it does solve the problem of the rocking back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and put, reapply this to the back of the clock chip. And uh, in the end, it'll be mounted right here. Now, I've already gone to the trouble to make sure that the, uh, that the pin connectors, as you can see, this, um, this little circular thing right here corresponds with uh, with these little guys right here. They're, they're supports for this, uh, this cartridge slot here. This is the, the Game Boy cartridge slot on the Super Game Boy. So I've just made sure, and you, if you decide to go down this path here, you, you definitely want to do the same thing here. Make sure that this fits. So we've got this guy in here. I want this to go together without touching. So as you can see, it's I'm not pressing down or anything. It's it's sitting flush in there and it's fine. So that's where we're going to go ahead and mount it. So I need to uh, to measure the wire length here and strip some wires, and uh, we should be ready to go. Okay, so I've got my uh, got my clock chip mounted and I'm just uh, trying to get a nice generous coating of flux on that guy on the, uh, the CPU pins. I need to uh, a little bit of solder on here to kind of prep these pins. Let's maybe use this to help hold it still. Connection a little bit there, that's fine. Just be able to pull that off. Uh, okay, so this is starting to turn into a video on bad soldering technique. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not by any means a soldering expert, as is probably obvious to anyone watching. But I did manage to get these, uh, these two Kynar wires tacked on there. So. The, the next step is going to be uh, connecting the ground wire, and uh, I had a, uh, a pre-tinned and uh, stripped wire for that, and I have misplaced it, so I'll be... Actually, no, here it is. I'm going to... Uh, this kind of wire is really sort of annoying to work with. Um, you know what? I, I think I'm going to actually use a different kind of wire for the ground, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my pre-tinned ground wire here. This is uh, this is a good deal easier to work with. Uh, this is uh, ribbon wire, for apparently for like uh, floppy disk ribbons or something like that. So I'm going to kind of bend this. This has already been pre-tinned a little bit. I'm going to install this one first, and the, uh, the clock pins are going to go underneath it, so let's see if I can get a good shot of that. I'm going to make sure that we flux this up really good. I'm a super amateur hour, so I need lots of flux. So... This in here. This is. I just see myself scorching these wires. I'm gonna bend them back a little bit here. Keep them out of my way. You know what? I've got this wonderful apparatus for holding this crap still and I'm not using it. Here we go. Let me just rotate the world in a few degrees here. Back in place. I'll put this little guy into the via here. If it'll stay. Just wanted to get enough in there to get it to stick. Yeah, it's it's in there good. So now I'm going to uh, feed some solder into that guy. I 
make him nice and solid. Give him a chance to pivot that a little bit. All right, so we're gonna attach to ground right there. So this is probably a little bit longer than strictly necessary, but that's okay, not hurting anything. Disappeared on me. Here it is. We're gonna flex this guy up real quick. A nice blob of solder on him. And this should uh, attach quite nicely. annoying things working with this stuff is that my hands are damn big. I'm going to bust out my tweezers. So that I can control this without worrying about getting crap burned out of my fingers. That should be quite nice and secure there. Now we're going to do uh, 73 which is the leftmost pin on the of the two that we did there and it is the leftmost pin. Actually you know what I'm gonna go the other direction I'm gonna do 74 next. So I've kind of pretend this guy a little bit. Might be a good idea to get some fresh flux in that via there but This is pin 74 that we're doing here. And should have just enough solder on him to hold him in place. Pin 74. I'm gonna feed a little bit more into this guy. super solid joint. It's a lot easier than working with this CPU legs. Alright, and here's our next one. The tape is just because I'm a little bit uh, leery about the, the connections there. I mean, they look like strong connections and I tugged on them a couple of times, but I would rather be safe than sorry. that in real quick. It's just not going to do anything for me. So I think what I'm going to do here, because that last one popped out on me, is I'm just going to go ahead and load this up. There we go. There should be a nice strong connection. Give it a couple tugs. All right. So with, uh, with all that fun, like all we really need to do is to reassemble this bad boy and uh, we should have a super game boy running at the correct clock speed okay so just one more follow-up here um, when I originally put the uh, ground wire on there I was actually it was actually hanging out and around this little lip here and it uh, <laughs> I didn't know it at the time but it actually uh, it actually has to that lip has to be free because that's where the that's where this goes in here. So I just uh, just had to move that down there in case you were following along. Uh, 